That just makes no fucking sense. I mean, it's just bullshit. Fuck. Bill Nye here, and I'm just reviewing some of the mean tweets. People bother, they take the time to tweet about me. Listening to Tifus Bus, Bill Nye sucks butthole. Hmm. Did not know that. Bill Nye made me hate science to a whole new level because he thought it was fun, and I think it still sucks. Thank you. I hate Bill Nye, that guy is so annoying. Like, so annoying. I hate watching these Bill Nye videos. I'd rather watch paint dry. And it's not, it doesn't say I, it just says I. And I gotta tell you, have you ever watched paint dry? Let me ask you something. Does it dry from the top first and the bottom later? Or does it dry from the bottom first and the top later? You could find out. A wiener. Now that is one hot dog. Everybody's talking about how college education isn't worth it. It's not a good value. It costs you for it takes your whole life to pay it back. People, if you get a degree, if you get an engineering degree, you'll get a job, <laughs> all right? I mean, it's a, I'm sorry. I love you all, and I love the history of art. I'm crazy <laughs> for it. <laughs> but it's an investment. I mean, if you're spending that kind of money, learn to think, but also get a skill or two, you know. Okay. Can you Go make a it. sex tape on Mars? I think so. It's 40% of the gravity. Okay. Oh. Just think you'd be not floating so to be like this whole, like, less than half. Bill Nye the Science Guy is trippy as fuck. Now, I don't know exactly how trippy fuck is, but I imagine it's excessively. What do you think about de-extinction or trying to genetically recreate extinct species? Oh, I think it'd be cool, uh, in moderation. <laughs> what would you start with? <laughs> uh, well, the one I'd, I'd really like to bring back, and I can, I, you guys can all guess it, Stellar Sea Cow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so apparently in 1870-something, the captain wrote in his book, I think we got the last one today. <laughs> so this was a marine mammal akin to... Uh, to the Floridian uh, humanity, yeah. but a, but a saltwater a saltwater animal uh, lived in the Bering Sea largely, and um, apparently because of its aspect ratio was a result of uh, myths about mermaids, and so I, that one I'd love to see. I'd love to get a dodo bird back. That was thoughtless. Mm -hmm. And uh, these, I mentioned these two because they're recent. I got mm -hmm. a feeling if we brought them back, uh, first of all, it might be technically possible mm -hmm. to bring them back. And the other thing, I think the ecosystem could tolerate it, like this reintroducing of these recent species. But come on, if you had a Tyrannosaurus, that'd just be no. freaking cool. <laughs> now suppose we want to make a big static electrical charge. Well, we could use something like this. This is called a Van de Graaff generator. It's named after Robert Van de Graaff. So what, here's what happens. Electrical charges are deposited on this rubber belt. The rubber belt turns and redeposits the electrical charges up here on this metal ball. Now, since this next part of the demonstration rocks, I'm gonna put on my rocker wig of science. Yeah! Now, start the rubber belt turning. Electrical charges are being deposited on the metal ball. They're running through my arm and being deposited in me. And look, it's building up in my rocker wig of science. See, since these charges are all the same, they're not attracting. No, they're repelling. They're pushing apart. So they're pushing the hairs of my rocker wig apart. Now, if I could find a way to get these electrical charges off of me back into the, some other parts of the room, 
the hairs wouldn't repel each other. There wouldn't be a static electrical charge, no. The charge would jump. So let's try it. Watch what happens when I bring this ball near this ball. See the spark? The charges jumped. The static electrical charges aren't static. No, they jumped. Static electricity, it rocks. See that, it sparked. Okay. But, you, but you can say something about the question which you really would wish to know the answer to. And I mean, for, for me, it would be what, what's consciousness? Oh, because yeah. because that's, that's totally baffling. That, Richie, you know what I think? I agree. Not that you ask, but what I think on this is uh, consciousness has kind of baffled us for a while, okay? And evidence that we haven't a clue about what consciousness is is drawn from the, in, from the fact of how many books are published on the topic, right? We're not really continuing to publish books, not really, on like Newtonian physics. It's done, all right? So, so the fact that people keep publishing books on consciousness is the evidence we don't know anything about it, because if we knew all about it, you wouldn't have to keep publishing. <laughs> so, so, what I wonder, <laughs> what I wonder, Richard, is whether there really is no such thing as consciousness at all, and that there's some other understanding of the functioning of the human brain that renders that question obsolete. To that, I've got to say, like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay. And am, I, am I, like, thinking? Or am I just, like, thinking that I'm thinking? Like, wow. <laughs> Will you Richard, stop? Oh, oh, right, sorry. Richard. We went, we went decades, we went decades not understanding the precession of Mercury. It was this big mystery, and we invented solutions to it, like a mysterious planet Vulcan tugging on it such that the, its, per, its perihelion processed. And, and that wasn't the explanation at all. It was obviously general relativity, another thing, not the original question <laughs> we were asking. So, you say you want to know what consciousness is, maybe that's not even the right question. How about oh. this? What's the nature of consciousness? Excellent. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> um. <laughs> Actually, I, Tracy, I think I want to uh, direct this one to you. Um, Who's you? To Tracy. Um, that's, that's, <laughs> not, that's not Neil. I'll be happy. Okay, be okay. okay. <laughs> um, Oh, hi. <laughs> Rub a balloon on your hair and bring it near another balloon hanging by a string. There's an invisible field pushing the two balloons apart. When you rub the balloon on your hair, you're transferring electrons from your hair onto the surface of the balloon. Now, the balloon's made of rubber. Electrons don't flow through it the way they do through a metal wire. Instead, they stay on the surface of the rubber. We use the word static electricity, which means electricity that stays. Now, different materials have different properties. Here's a stiff rubber rod and a piece of fur. It's like rubbing a rubber balloon on my hair. It also will push the balloon away. But watch what happens when I use the same piece of fur and this glass rod. it pulls the balloon toward it. So in the first case, we say they have like charges, like static charges, so they repel. In this case, they have opposite static charges, so they attract. You can try different materials and different experiments. Here's some rubber making scraps of paper jump around. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> or 